welcome back. Greg gets his blood. Oh, he just keeps landing on you, and I love it every time. <laughs> oh, look at that Minacle It's laugh. two. So I maybe you couldn't transform and uh, hit him with your super beam. Which is uh, two sticks in. There you go. Do it before he shoots you. Yes. Oh, you beat him. It's over. Oh, that's the end of the episode. Oh, yeah. actually, we should. Do it. <laughs> no, no. So I'm interested what you think about this. So he's. Like, that's also actually a very similar line to. By the way, welcome Goldberg. to the Richard and Greg show. I'm Greg. I'm Richard. Uh, sorry about that. I was. Excited about the concept perspective beating of Megatron. You did catch us. Yeah. So now we get switched over to Optimus for this uh, fight. Um, Who is rather than Grimlock? He's also jumping on the back of Insecticon. So yeah, yeah. Let's just brush over that and <laughs> not, not let's not think about that. Um, but this is epic. Sorry, that's the oh the controller is rumbling and what a joy. Oh. <laughs> and as I put it up to the mic, oh no, it starts up again. Let's see if that picks up that. So there he's Optimus trying to make the shot. Make the shot, but no! Megatron for the interception. And now we're fighting in space because this is we awesome. Should Blood Bowl we should Blood Bowl 2. Oh, we should. We should. For the, the footballing. That's all I know about American. Yep, so now they have this awesome Wait, direction. Have in space? Yeah, you're in orbit. Fighting Megatron. Because that's awesome. So try not to be him too fast because there's some awesome dialogue. Yeah, um, well, I, honestly, I just want it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> oh, ice powers from nowhere again. But um, <laughs> I don't know what he's grinding you against there. <laughs> but basically, we want to do it in space, but we don't want to pay for the animation yeah. changes. But um, yeah, I'll, uh, basically, he's like, "Your place is Cybertron, the center of the universe." Megatron's like, "Cybertron is the center of my universe. Why isn't the center of yours?" And, um, they're not actually saying the dialogue. I think somehow we cut it off, which sucks, because it's really cool. Am I? Whoa, yes. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. So, so there's a center of my So yeah, Megatron's love for Cybertron. Because of the principles, man. The principles. Cybertron's not just a place. It's a place in your heart. Yeah, I love this. The, yeah, this, that you're saying before, cyber supremacist, he doesn't see like organic life as life. Which is actually kind of interesting philosophically for a robot race. Well, why would he? I mean, we don't. Yeah, exactly. We, like, I mean, some. I don't really feel uh, concerned about my like, stuff. Yeah, exactly. You're defending my product, yes. So he's like, uh, you know. Oh, that's right. I didn't play it then. So, uh... Whoa! I have, I have this uh, song on my, because they don't so they're not selling their soundtrack. I have to get off YouTube, but I've got the soundtrack on my phone. It's just awesome. To listen to that. I hope that lines up perfectly, because otherwise I sound like a idiot. <laughs> but um, man. I'm pretty sure we can beat me if I'm now. So you know, Greg, stop pulling back. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying. Where do you want to? Do you want to use a healing? Yes, I do. Yeah. So uh, the other other menu. So you use the select button on the start button. Yeah. There we go. So items. Repair. Uh. Yeah. May as well use the launch. Yep. There you go. And uh, now you can resume the uh, awesome beatdown. Freaking love this music. A new Cybertron is being born. So, to be fair, all of the. Ah, Megatron. Just, I don't know what it is about the conflict with these two, but they just. It's one of those little rivalries which is like, I don't know, really works for me. Um, it's like, you know, Batman Joker sort of thing. Like, oh, oh, they're pulling away. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's just because the two of them have so much fun with their roles, like voice actors, but... I don't know, it, I, this, this conflict really works for me. Whereas, like, other ones may not so much. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but... Oh, yep. Have fun, uh, quick time events. Get the money, more money! Why would I want money at this point? More money, more Megatrons! And that's... It's over. 
is a role reversal for Meg- uh, Megatron says it to Optimus. Megatron does the same uh, two-fisted punch in the face. Which is actually a really inefficient way of punching people. Yes. Because it will hurt your fingers real badly. It will not let me shut yes. down the insect. Because Megatron is not dumb. Megatron! What have you done? done? One <laughs> I just love him sort of like chilling in space here. In order to shut <laughs> down the out. <laughs> yeah. Check it out, Optimus. You like you it, don't must you? Destroy it. You, you like my manifolds. <laughs> but he's a gun! You are correct, Megatron. He's a tank in this one. Oh, that's true. Have the courage to make the right Actually, there was a Megatron toy which um, uh, comically had the trigger right between his legs. <laughs> it looked real bad. Optimus makes the ultimate sacrifice. Well, hey, an ultimate sacrifice. A very considerable sacrifice. Yeah, it's not quite the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. I mean, there's quite clearly lots of Cybertronians <laughs> still around. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, these Insecticons are sort of half sapient. Mm. The humans will decide, will decide their, their own, own fate. fate. Peter Cullen's Optimus is just so good. Apparently he based it off his brother, who I think was a soldier in okay, Vietnam War. I think I say his brother. Who was a talking truck? <laughs> it was a, so, and Optimus is just like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just fall back into you know, the atmosphere. That's cool. Accepted Earth as our home, holding out some distant hope that, that we yeah. would return. So I was surprised that there was actual character development in this story. I Admittedly, mean, it happened all at the end, <laughs> but um, like Optimus is like, you know, having to accept that he's got to move on and protect the people here we are and no let go of the past. And um, it seems like we're not Cybertronians, we're Earthlings. Now Which I thought was really interesting. Earth. I think it was a really cool we angle to take. So you never watched the end of uh, Prime? That's what we're trying to do. Nah, I, I couldn't do it. Because it feels very similar in that. Oh, does it? No okay. Matters. I mean, a lot of the question is, basically Megatron is wants to reignite Cybertron yeah. at any cost. Oh yeah. And oh, also yeah. which is this sort of thing. Optimus. And uh <laughs> also Optimus is fine. <laughs> it's whatever. Well, I mean, it appears that that's that's entry. Real as well. So here's some little they want to tease us a little bit as with said, upcoming stuff. So he wants to we need more troops. Oh yeah. The, the prophecy, prophecy on the proud about, star. Um Oh, his prophecy. We didn't, we got Grimlock's prophecy. His one says basically you're gonna if you die you're in the war. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. And so Defensor and Superion. Like Defensor, we are here to uh, Superion's sort of psychotically fixated on killing Decepticons. Defensor is actually the most stable, I think, mentally combiner. But he's apparently his joints are bad. This is a reference to IDW comic, which is really dumb. This is, I think, uh, Optimus Maximus or something. Where um, Optimus, Sunstreaker, a couple of other guys, I think Ironhide, they all combine. I'm like, no, Optimus isn't a combiner. Don't do that. That's just lame. I didn't like it. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I think some people will get out of it, but I. Although, one of the things I. By the way, this is Stan Bush, who is now these days more or less bound to write songs for every Transformer thing which ever comes out. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. he's he's I like it. It's good good old fashioned '80s. Belting. Sorry. Uh, well, no, I was gonna say, uh, you know, like Revenge of the Fallen had um, oh, what's his face, the the Blackbird guy. Revenge of the Fallen, Blackbird. Um, you know the guy who turned into the SF oh, on Blackbird. He kind of yeah. like gave himself the, up and the then they digit fire. Yeah, that was that's sort of fire. That's right. Yeah, that was a really lame version of Jet Fire, by the way. Actually, you know what? Of a terrible movie, he probably wasn't the worst part of that movie. I would say he's probably the best. He might have been actually. He was a cranky old man, wasn't he? he was yeah. Sort of... Well, I mean, he was like a forward scout who'd been on Earth yeah. for like not a million years. Yeah, for a long time. Um, yeah. So I mean, it was more like uh, he was just kind of out of repair, maintenance, lack of maintenance. Yeah, breaking down. Yeah, that's the word. Um, I like these tabloids actually. And then they kind of formed that, you know, jetpack. The Starscream sort of disappears fairly, like halfway through it, which is kind of surprised to me. Cause Doesn't he's, surprise me. He's a sort of big figure, but he's a coward. He's a coward, I guess that's true. So that was devastation. People, it was. Um, we're going to hang around for the credits because there's an after credit scene, which is of not there is. Also really that worth it, but it was a bit of eat up time. So, <laughs> uh, mega, I, I just love it so much. I, I'm just a massive geek. Let's be honest. And the uh, substandard. Oh, hello. 
Wait, didn't he die falling on explosives? I don't think he died. I think the cush- the explosives cushioned his fall. Oh, and I he, see. He, he um he just sort of gently fell asleep. Oh, wait, this is these are these are more oh, yeah. shots. Are these are just cutscene things. So it's a, they ran out of tabloids apparently. So they decided just to run the <laughs> run of the oh, the, some of the pre rendered graphics. Yeah, wow. it's an interesting art style, isn't it? Most people like, wouldn't be watching this part of the credits, so you might as well. Ah, oh, I suppose so. But um, a true fan would. But um, it's an interesting art style. I like the way they sort of uh, pre-rendered the sort of shine on the the, the lighting on it, on the uh, bodies. Um, sometimes it works for me, sometimes it doesn't. But I think generally I like it. Well, I assume it's part of the texture rather than. Yes, that's what I mean. Like uh, they they put it on the texture um, rather than having some sort of dynamic lighting, which somehow emulates that, which would be which would be much more and performed. night more <laughs> nightmare to to make work. But I mean, like, I guess if you wanted to have that kind of really chrome look, you'd have to have a lot of light. But then yeah. not actually having the lights calculated yeah. on the fly would be yeah. very... You could have yeah. a lot better performance. Yeah, it, it, I think it gives it that a more... more I'm thinking of it as a program. <laughs> like, yeah, No, no, look, I, I think it's entirely reasonable to look at it as a programmer. Because for a start, it would change the aesthetic. But um, it would be, as you say, a huge drain on performance. Yeah. So what I mean, is really, I kind of think, that's something they cranked out for fun. Um, like this this game because I think I mean see like so then it's sort of like a okay uh, do you know what a bump map is? I I know I've heard the word. <laughs> so basically, like you wanted to make say an orange right? Yeah. Which has got a, like a really bumpy yes, but it's yeah. mostly spherical like it's very yeah. So I mean you could do the polygons and do like all the little in, all of it. In it's going to be a lot of work, a lot of calculation. Sure. So what you tend to do is you have your orange is like a sphere, yeah, and you have your texture, which is um, yeah. like that. And normally yeah, when you calculate like the color, mm. you calculate the normal of the surface mm. versus lights, and then you, know, you use yeah. the trigonometry to work out should it be dark or should it be full light? What, what you know what's the property of it? Yeah. So rather than but, so you have your orange, you have a sphere, yeah, and if you just had an orange sphere, it would look yeah like an orange ball. Yeah. Not bumpy like an orange. Yeah. A bump map is another texture mm-hmm. that basically determines the normal at each point. Okay. Normal being the vector perpendicular to the surface yeah, at that yeah. point. So you not actually got the polygons to that, you just arbitrarily adjusting the normal. So it looks bumpy because you still have that. Okay. Um, you know, dark so you're light. applying almost like a um, a formula to sort of create a te- like a an actual well, I say an actual texture, an actual um, up, you know, ups and downs. Yeah, I mean, even though it, it's derived based on the base uh, mesh of the circle, the sphere. Yeah. So it, it basically, rather than having an actual bumpy sphere model yeah. of polygons, you're just adding this kind of yeah. bumpiness to the texture. Yeah. Not the, save massive amount of man hours, I imagine. Well, it, uh, it's more the runtime performance. Okay, that as well then. Um, so here's here's our after credit scene, deep in the proud star, which no one has thought to you know do anything about. <laughs> we follow. Follow the yellow brick road to the little circle, or well, hexagon, I should say. I was okay, I was out last night at a pub, and I just randomly got asked by some tutors walking by, you know, what do you think about hexagons? I'm like, ah, uh, they've got six sides, and that's yeah. Nova Prime. Yeah. Like, oh no, he's on one. Evil. And I was like, uh, and then they're like, what do you think about octagons? And I'm like, ah, uh. <laughs> two more and than like, hexagon. I don't know why this is so important that. Uh, we um, need to have a conversation in the random pub about it. So let's, uh, let me, I'll just take over for a second. Sure. Well, we've got a few minutes to burn. Let's see what, um, uh, oh, we, we get the fusion cannon, which is super cool. Star Saber is a, um, uh, from the Japanese series, Magic Sword. Um, also Prime. Actually, no, it's a character. Sometimes it's a character, sometimes it's a, um, <laughs> a, 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 an actual sword. In Prime, it was a really kick-ass sword. Ah, okay. Um, so what have we got in the gallery? Anyway, so my point about the whole bump map yeah. is, um, rather than having a really flat, so, like, see how the, the characters, yeah, got lots of shape, like, we're not, it's not like bumpy like a bump map, like an orange, right? Yeah. But you still got a lot of, um, variation on what would otherwise be a flat surface. Right? Like, yeah. I mean, see, look at the shadows on motor maps. 
Oh, no, it's not a uh, Nemesis Prime. Nemesis Prime, my friend. Um, like, see how you got the shadows, like... I think what they're... Yeah, sorry? I think what they're doing there is, like, it just makes it look much more textured. Yeah. But it would otherwise be a flat surface. Yes, that's correct. Without having to do any of the lighting Beast. involved. So I'm pushing the try me button up here, which say they'll say various lines. I'll rip you apart with my bear hands. Hands. The movie. Earth has pinned its final hope on you. But he has robot hands, not bear hands. Oh. So um Beast. they'll say their like um text spec little quotes like Conquest went through on the ca ashes, ashes of one's, of one's enemies. enemies. Shockwave will say clarity of mind before rashness of action. Clarity of thought or thought. before rashness Sorry. of action. I can't remember what um, swing will go. Um, ah, there's something about thinking of fighting. Destroy, Destroy thing. Think, think later. Oh, I don't know. So this is just cool. It's just me geeking out, looking at all the models. The Devastator, all the constructor guns, dinosaur, random soldiers, and of course the deals. The dinosaur was with a C or an S. No, it's an S. It's always been an S. Um. And of course the DLC models and stuff. I just noticed gold finds the gold bug. Must have been uh, one of those copyright things. Red, <laughs> red alert, paranoid, paranoid security expert. Anyway, I think that's it for Transformers Devastation. Any final thoughts? Um. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, I guess I liked it. It probably if I played. Not on the stream, well, not, stream. not stream recorded. On recorded, yeah. Uh, you know, like going through myself at a high difficulty. I think some of the systems might have been more important, like the crafting. Oh yeah. yeah. As was, as we were going through, it felt more like, well, this is a, a needless distraction. Not even a yeah. distraction, more like a. It felt like a chore that just like. Ugh. Yeah, and to be honest, it doesn't stop being a chore. Uh, it's probably the weakest part of the game. It's definitely the weakest part of the game. Yeah, and obviously right, there's some the level design looking. issues I had. Oh, uh, and you're right, like... it's not perfect, but I had... It, 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 it knew what it was, and it was fun, man. As a Transformers geek, I was just like, Yeah! Punch the Seekers! It's very... I mean, it's obviously probably the most faithful to the 80s cut oh, yes, of yeah. any Transformers game. Yeah, easy. That I could think of. Um, I mean, I'd still like the worst for Cybertron, for Cybertron. More? Really? I don't know, I would say more, but I mean, I like them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like their aesthetics. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. Autobots, roll out! Is I? Yeah, it's good. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself. Anyway, thanks for watching our playthrough of this game. Um, we'll be back with another one, which I choose, while we still play Craig's Choice for the other one, which I think is currently uh, Chris Anakin's 2. It is. And we'll probably never finish it. No, never will, but we'll see what happens. Alright, see you guys. Au revoir. Bye bye.